Hi, you're watching TechCrunch TV. I'm Colleen Taylor, and sitting with me is Bing Gordon, a partner at Kleiner Perkins Caulfield & Byers. Thanks for joining me here. Yeah, uh, here at South by Southwest, it's noon and it's like pre-dawn. <laughs> There's nobody out. People are in down parkas and bare midriffs. Yeah, it's it's a weird it's a weird vibe. It is. It's noon, and we both looked at each other and said, "It's early, isn't it?" Because it has been a fun South by Southwest so far. We're at the Iron Cactus, where Kleiner had its party last night. After you sat on a pretty amazing panel talking about creativity. Yes, with uh, Jeff Goodby, the founder of Goodby Silverstein Partners Agency, um, and he mentioned that I was his first client in 1983 at Electronic Arts, and uh, he wrote an ad titled, Can a Computer Make You Cry? And I just wanted to sit on a couch and hear him uh, try to elicit conversation from others. He is, uh, he's the guy who convinced me I was not a writer. <laughs> Uh, he's a, he, he's a poet, and I'm an analyst. You, you you thought you were more creative or more of a writer than you are, and there was also a musician on the panel, Damien oh, yeah. Del Go. And I want to ask if you think you know if technology people. I know that you have a lot of friends who are musicians. Um, and do you think people in tech should hang out more with creative people? How do you kind of like? Well, the yeah, entrepreneurs are pretty creative if you think about. Uh, people can't help themselves but make something out of nothing. And, um, you know, the tools for entrepreneurs these days are code, uh, code people and money. And we've got designer friends. The tools are wood lathes and uh, uh, paint and paper. Uh, for musicians, it's, you know, this thing and this thing. Uh, so I think the, the, the creative instinct um, needs a tool-based context. Everybody has tools. But the... Um, you know, the fear that authors have facing a blank piece of paper, or musicians have facing a, a studio without material, is not unlike the fear of an entrepreneur with a business idea having to go to work and going, oh my God, it's kind of the black hole of uncertainty that every entrepreneur has to face. And uh, that's why you see so many entrepreneurs that are disruptively overconfident because it takes that kind of uh, uh, weird, uh, self-confidence to actually push into the unknown. What do you tell a founder if they're, you know, if they've got writer's block? Oh boy, well the first thing is their job is to create confidence in others, so you know, it's okay to have writer's block, um, just then go do something. The, <coughs> I met a, a writing teacher once who said if somebody has a writer block, get them to write about something amazingly small hmm. and a story about a student who came in and said write write one page about the house you grew up in and she came in the next day in tears I can't I can't you know there's so many memories so many things to write he said come in tomorrow write about a window in your bedroom she came in and said oh I had so many ideas I just I couldn't do anything and he said okay write about the brick at the bottom of the window in your bedroom and she went, really? That's like so small. And she came in the next day with 20 pages. Huh. So the, um, I think um, the more experience you get, the more tools you have to uh, unblock. Cool. And, and, you know, the always beta movement and agile development is all about um, do stuff before your subconscious says, that sucks. Just let it flow. Let it, yeah, get, get it out there and see what happens. So Damien from OK Go said, all their best songs were afterthoughts. All the, all the times they said, we're going to create this great song. This needs to be sung. And they go do it and sit there and they go, oh, that's self-important, Pap. That's no good. And then at the end, when they got a, uh, a dumb idea, that's, that's what always works. It must be the same way with interviews. You ask all the questions you prepared for, and then something weird comes up at the end when you think the camera is not rolling. I know. <laughs> oh, and we should always keep the cameras rolling because often it is. It's like you know, at the end of the party is when the best conversations start, and it's like the end of the interview or the end of or and afterwards. You're sure that after Abraham Lincoln finished the Gettysburg Address, <laughs> you know, he, that's when he had a, a, a couple bloopers that everybody <laughs> really wanted to know. He said four actually did score. <laughs> Maybe. So we, now we would have video to show it. Um, I also want to ask you, because obviously you're the big gaming guy, 
and you're talking uh, while you're here about bringing gamification into television and into these television interfaces. I mean, how can, can that really happen? What's the, what's the vision uh, well, here? So the first thing is, uh, you know, I kind of believe that gaming is the future of life. But the, um, the cable people had their chance to reinvent TV and they didn't. <laughs> um, but gamers are the, the media user, users who are at the leading edge. They've kind of defined uh, cameras, UI, uh, feedback systems, and, uh, and kind of all these levers of engagement. And uh, so I think their, their needs are going to uh, uh, set a pattern for what should happen with the future of TV. Not the, um, um, not the IP owners who just want people to watch the stuff they've already made, but the gamers who uh, believe in, in uh, remix and clickable everything. And so, does that mean more, intera so more interactive? Yeah, interactive everything. Right, so, but it, you think it'll still be television or just kind of be replaced by uh, internet? Scre uh, screens. Yeah. The, um, you know, we're already seeing, you know, Twitter for sure, Shazam are showing that um, they, there's an experience that people want to have when they're holding a tablet or they're holding their phone with a big screen on and something here in the, uh, um, it used to be a sign of a, of a bad couple when they lie in bed with two TVs. Yes. But now it's kind of the modern couple, uh, they lie in bed with two tablets uh, one TV, you know that's the couple that's really got it going on. <laughs> it's not a bad thing anymore, depending uh, on what's on the screens. No, and you know, it's um, I mean, the, the digital generation, so I have a daughter, Allegra, who's 21, and when she was a kid, that she would sit with her best friend side by side in front of TV, both on laptops, and ask, boy, you're really intent. What are you doing? She said, well, I'm, I'm uh, texting her, I'm emailing her. <laughs> um, so the, um, you know, it's, it's quality time when you're texting together, even if you're in the same space. Oh, I think I just got a text from you. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, I'm texting with my mind, actually, that's. Um, that's coming. It's and, and so the, um, about this at South the, South the uh, leading, edge, leading edge game designers um, are leaning hard oh. into this um, future TV experience. Uh, uh, the two founders of NG Moco are just uh, uh, doing something top secret called Network, and um, I just joined them as an investor, and they're doing stuff. So that some of the some of the people who've uh, who've been doing games um, have been attracted to transmedia, have never had a chance to do transmedia. And this seems like the time. Right. And last question here, because talk about gaming. Quick, we have to get to the bloopers. <laughs> I know. I want to get to the last question, then we'll get to the good stuff. Um, but you're on the board of Zynga, and a lot of people are kind of down on gaming now because Zynga's stock hasn't performed nearly as well as maybe some people would have expected. You know, how do you kind of reconcile this future of gaming with, you know, some setbacks here in the macroeconomic? Well, the um, a little before you were born, but when Electronic Arts was founded, the um, there was a whole decade where um, grown-ups could prove that uh, games had no future. They'd go the way of the hula hoop, and um, uh, we were right, and they were wrong. The uh, so I think as measured by minutes, people are playing more minutes of gaming than ever before, and. Um, you know, we, we only trust TechCrunch. We don't trust newspapers. <laughs> <laughs> so. But, it, you know, it's all about, uh, as, as with any medium, it's uh, um, all about uh, the quality of uh, new releases and the quality of support of live. And, uh, you know, I'm long on gaming and bullish on Zynga. Long on gaming, bullish on Zynga. Ben Gordon, thank you for sitting down with me at this table for two. And um, have fun at South by Southwest. Thanks, and the same to you. Thanks.